Every non-constant complex polynomial function has complex roots. Of course, there are counterexamples in the real numbers, for example. If you pick this function, f of x equals x squared plus 1. If we try to find the roots of this parabola, we find out that they just don't exist in the real numbers. But in the complex numbers, they do exist. In mathematical terms, the fundamental theorem of algebra, or d'Alembert's theorem, says that if we have a polynomial where the coefficients are complex numbers and the variable z is complex as well, with n greater or equal than 1, then there exists a point in the complex numbers, z0, such that p of z0 is 0. So you can find roots for this polynomial. Let's prove it. Well, by contradiction, suppose such z0 does not exist. Then we can construct a function of this kind, 1 over p of z. And this is an entire function. What does it mean? It means that it is holomorphic or differentiable in all the complex plane, for every point in the complex plane. And we can see as well that it's non-constant, because we assume the polynomial to be non-constant. Now, since a n is different than 0, then for any z non-zero, we can write the following. We're just expanding a general expression for this polynomial in absolute value. Now, dividing everything by z to the power of n and taking off the module of z to the power of n, we get this for each term. But notice that this is greater or equal than the sum of negative numbers, except for the last one, which is positive, a n. Can you see why this is true? Please let me know in the comments your thoughts about why this is true. But then this implies that the module of this polynomial for z that tends to infinity is greater than z to the power of n in absolute value times a n in absolute value, which equals plus infinity. So then knowing this, we can say that f of z in absolute value, which is just one over p of z in absolute value, tends to zero when z's absolute value tends to infinity. And therefore, there exists an R, a radius that is a positive real number, large enough such that the absolute value of f of z is always less or equal to 1 for any z such that its absolute value is greater than R. And this is an important fact. If we consider the complement of the closed disk with centering 0 and radius R, such that this radius is large enough, then its image under the mapping F is this. So let's see how this function acts on this set. So first we have here the complement of the closed disk with radius R and centered in 0. And we know that its image is going to be inside of this closed disk centered in 0 and with radius 1. In fact, it's going to be something like that. That's the image of it. But we can see how it is bounded by the unit circle. So its image is contained inside of this closed disk. So we can say that this image, which is a set, is bounded. Okay, we know how the image of F is for points outside of this closed disk with centering 0 and radius R, namely its complement. But what about points inside of the disk? Well, we know that this closed disk with centering 0 and radius R is compact, using the definition of compact as a closed bounded set. And we know that F is continuous, since it is entire, as we said in the beginning. A very well-known fact in topology is that if we have a compact set and map it with a continuous function, the image of this set will be compact as well. So we say that compactness is a property that is preserved under continuous mappings. And we don't know how the image f of this disk is gonna be, how it looks like. But one thing we know, it is compact. And therefore, it is bounded. So since the image of f is bounded for every point inside and outside of this disk, therefore, we can conclude that f is bounded in all the complex plane. Let's see what happens now for the image of the closed disk centered in zero and with radius r. So its image is gonna have some shape that we don't know, but we know that this image is gonna be bounded. Finally, since we know that f is bounded and entire, we can use the Louville theorem, which says that if f is a complex function that is bounded and entire, then f must be constant. I'm not going to prove this theorem here, I'm just going to use it, but probably one of the next videos I'm going to publish will be about its proof, the Louville's theorem. Let me know in the comment section if you guys would really like to see that. So then we found that f is constant, but wait a minute, f of z was 1 over p of z. So if f is constant, p of z must be constant as well. But that's a contradiction because we assumed p of z to not be constant. And therefore, our hypothesis that p of z has no roots was false. And that's the proof of the fundamental theorem 
of algebra. Please, if you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to the channel. See you guys next time.